You've got a big commercial solar system, lots of DC cable, roof mount, and of course, cable tray. So what calculations do you need to work out your exact material requirements? Let's find out. Ellie here from Greenwood Solutions. We're talking cable tray on a large commercial roof mount system. After watching this video, you'll understand how to put together a spreadsheet to calculate all that's necessary for your next commercial solar project from a cable tray perspective. Now, if you like the videos that we're producing and you want us to continue to produce them, hit that subscription button. Let's get stuck into it. One of the big differences between domestic and commercial solar system design is a use of cable tray and in this presentation we will look at the use of cable tray on the roof of a large distribution warehouse that houses a commercial solar array. The tray in this example is used to accommodate the over 100 DC cable runs. We take a spreadsheet approach that allows the designer to assign a particular name to a particular cable tray run, calculate how much tray, tray lid and associated materials required for each individual run and the overall amount. We'll be using Excel, but any spreadsheet will work, so let's get started. We will configure the spreadsheet into a series of columns. The first one being row number. The second will be the roof description. Third, length of the tray used. And fourth, the width of the tray used. So 150, 300, 450 mil or 600. Let's continue on. The next series of columns include the run length in meters, the buffer percentage, the lid length and the lid overlap in millimetres. Run length, lid length and lid overlap in millimetres are self-explanatory. The buffer percentage is to allow for mistakes and unknowns. So example, you could add 4% to the run length. Basically, the inputs for each cable tray row can be dragged down depending on how many rows you're actually using on your project. Now, the next inputs include the lid screw spacing, the supports under the tray, the unistrut, etc. The distance between the supports and the length of pieces being used as supports and the length that comes in. With the what pieces are you using category, we see our first formula that references the selected tray's width and adds a certain amount, in this case 80 millimetres, to accommodate the cable tray hold downs. Now the outputs replicate the first two by columns from the inputs, but the third column here uses a formula to calculate how many tray lengths are needed, the number of lid lengths, hex screws, and splices. Tray lengths references the cable tray run, of course, and divides by the length of tray used and then rounds up. This also happens with the lid, but the length is reduced by the amount of overlap. The hex screws references the spacing input that you've put in and the cable tray run and adds two and the splices are the same as mid clamps number of trays minus one times two. So on this slide you can see the actual calculations that I've used. So spend your time having a look through those. The next three columns use the number of splices figure, the number of splice bolts, number of splice washers if applicable, and the number of splice nuts. For every splice, there is two of the above. The next three columns use the number of supports figure, number of feet used, number of hold downs, number of channel nuts, springs, number of bolts for the channel nuts, and the number of washers for the channel nuts. These all relate to the number of structural supports under the tray, and in this case, we are using Unistrut. This slide just gives you a breakdown of the formulas used, so spend your time having a look at those. The output's nearly there. Next on the list is the number of pieces from length, length left over from the piece, the number of lengths needed, and round up. Length left over can be used to gauge waste, and also if the minimum waste is equal or greater to than the minimum required for the smaller tray, say 150 mil, uh, it can be used. 
So we have the outputs for all the rows and now we need to know the total material list for this project cable wise. As there are a few different tray profiles, we need to know the totals. The formulas to gather up all the info are as follows. Tray width list uses the unique function and looks at I4 to I8 and identifies the trays used. The number of lengths uses the sum if function, looks at the same range and then at the tray width and number of lengths. Number of lid lengths does the same but looks at number of lengths. Number of support lengths, again the same as the above. This section outputs the smaller bits and pieces ranging from the number of splices all the way through to the number of washers for channel nuts. Note these calculations are independent of the width of the tray as this is irrelevant. And in this slide you can see the actual outputs. Now we can go one better. What if we quickly want to know what tray was being used on what row and the totals for those rows? For example, 450 mil tray. For this we use data validation, the drop down list, filter and the sum function. So you can see from this slide, row number 9, 10, 11, 12 are using the 450 mil tray and you can see the totals at the bottom. What about 300 mil tray? So it's the same thing and you can see in this case row number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 are using the 300 mil tray. And 600 mil tray, row number 13, 14 and 15. Conclusion. On big commercial solar projects, the ability to accurately calculate material costs is a decided advantage and cable tray is no exception. In this presentation, we looked at how to approach this problem from a spreadsheet perspective and the same logic can be applied to other aspects of your next commercial solar project. Thanks for watching our presentation on cable tray, a spreadsheet perspective revisited. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Now, if you have any questions, any um, inquiries, or even any answers, feel free to drop us a line. If you like what you see, hit that subscription button so we can continue making these videos. See you next time.